Today we're going to talk about scaling up in the private sector. The reason that this is so important for development work is because the private sector is the best at scaling up. We can learn enormously from many things about the private sector, their efficiency, their speed, their innovation, uh, their ability to fail quickly and then uh, find other solutions, their ability to attract capital. So there are many reasons why scaling up happens much faster in the private sector, but also is a great lesson for um, development, both for governments, social enterprises, um, and the organizations that Imago usually works with. The problem with the private sector is that it does not work with the poor. Normally, we want to use these um, uh, principles to get to the poor, but because the money uh, and the profits at the base of the pyramid are much lower, uh, they are usually, and full of uh, failures in terms of the value chains, is usually um, difficult for the private sector to go in. So how do startup funds themselves, first of all? It's, it's important to think about um, the funding um, dynamics of the private sector. You usually start on your own in your idea stage. You can see the funder there owns 100% of a company, which is really an idea. Uh, then you find a co-founder, which is one of the most important things that you can do. Find a good co-founder that complements your skills, but also that is very aligned with your own values. Doing this on your own is um, unnecessary and probably you will uh, quickly burn out. Having somebody that complements your skills, one has a vision, the other one is really good at implementing, the questions one asks from another, so that's the second stage, the co-founder. And then as you start growing, then you get your family and your friends excited and they start to contribute to, um, to, your, to your project, to your vision. And eventually you will be ready to do a seeds uh, round to get um, money beyond uh, your family and friends, to get angel investors. Um, and eventually you will get uh, VCs, uh, um, venture capitalists, uh, early employees who come in and are saying, I'm willing to work for less, um, but if I'm going to get a stake in this company, and finally, after many years, you go to an IPO, which is a public offering where investment bankers help you to prepare that public offering for a fee. And then anyone can own a part of your company. In the US, 90% of the startups fail. And people said maybe 5% should have failed. Not necessarily. Uh, but 5% uh, should make it big. But most of the customers, uh, most of the companies fail because of the lack of customers. So the process from going to startup to scale is a process that we're going to get in, uh, in, in, this, um, in this lecture. So you start with an idea. Uh, on the left hand side, you have your cumulative profits and losses. Um, and you see that you start doing some research, eventually you start doing, you, you develop that idea, then you get some technology, and all this is costing you money. Um, then you launch your first product to see whether it actually customers want it. And then you might have success in the best of cases and you start to take it to more. Uh, customers and then uh, you reach success as a business after many many years usually after many many years um, and so what you have in between is what we call the valley of death over time there is a important period where you are researching and developing your new product where you don't have the funding so that's why what we just talked about how you get that funding is so important so in the US, uh, we have a value of death, which we could think about between 100,000 and $2.5 million. Uh, that's the time when it's most difficult to get financing. 
You have microfinance, you have grants, you have um, here in, 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 in Boston, in the university area, you have so many competitions and grants uh, at MIT, at the Harvard Business School, where you get initial small capital, you can get $5,000, $10,000, um, and eventually bigger grants, but there's a long period of time where there is no money until you really become less risky and bigger for people to really uh, uh, fund you. So development finance, private equity, uh, they are all much larger um, than the 100,000 where you stop getting the competitions. So that's what we call the Valley of Death. And if we think about that, it's that's one of the reasons why startups fail, um, but not the only reason why startup fails. Money, the lack of money is Absolutely an issue, especially in developing countries where market failures are much, much more prevalent, but usually it's a symptom of other issues and that's why they fail. So let's think about why do startups fail um, to get the funding that they need. Um, so the first one is they must be managed. You cannot just jump into a startup and say, let's just do this. It's not going to work. Um, the second reason is that when we get trained about what are, how to manage big companies or when we are in a big company and are learning, uh, those tools really don't work uh, with technology and with startups. The third reason, which is one of the most important, is premature scaling. So many companies are very, startups are very enthusiastic about their product and then they are, you know, dying to just go to many before they really have a business model. We also know that startups that pivot, that adapt and experiment and test different ways uh, once or twice are much more likely to succeed than those that from the beginning think that they have the right product design, haven't tested with the customer, which is um, a very important uh, stage in the startup process. And most startups don't have a structured process to test their business model hypotheses. They assume that they know what the customer wants and what features to build. They focus on the launch date and they confuse traditional job titles with what a startup needs to accomplish. The CEO, the managing director, the VP for sales, which is actually the traditional product development model, which is you have a concept, you have a seed round where you get a bit of money, you start to market, you start to sell, then you develop your product. Then you do your alpha and beta test. You hire your sales VP, you hire your sales staff, um, and then uh, you launch and create the demand. And this is exactly what is wrong uh, with thinking about startups and technology. So uh, a book that I have really loved in terms of um, forming my own thinking has been um, the Startup Owner's Manual by Steve Black and Bob Dorf. And I'm going to talk about the way that they see, um, the, the way that a lean startup is, uh, is, is, has to go through a process which actually is likely to give much more success or at least you'll spend less money finding out that you are not going to succeed uh, than in the previous traditional uh, development model. So this customer client development model has two, um, two, two very important times. The one on the left hand side, customer discover, customer validation is the startup phase. That's the lean startup phase. That's where you want to spend little money because you are looking for your business model. So you want to be able to pivot many times or whatever times is necessary until you find that business model, which is scalable, that you will be able to take to many. And so that's where the Lean Startup is different to other models in that it focuses on the left hand side before moving to company building and execution, which is on the right hand side. So the searching for a business model is at the core of this idea of the Lean Startup. So let's start with customer discovery. First of all, you need to find out what are your customers' problems? How much will they pay to solve them? 
There, design thinking is very important. Getting into the life of that customer and understanding what is it that you are going to be solving for them. Sometimes it's inspired for by your own self as a customer. There's something you don't have and you think should be an innovation. Yeah, but then what about the other customers? Uh, are you solving the problem? Then developing a minimum viable problem. A product which is what is the core the essence of that product that you need to develop to solve that problem and then do your customers agree that that minimum viable product is solving the problem so you have to think of a day in the life of a customer and think before and after your product how did their lives change that's very much a design thinking question centered on the customer um, in in terms of what you want to design then you can move to customer validation. Once you know that there is an, a minimum viable product, there's, there's a, a product that is filling a gap in the life of your customer and that that customer is willing to pay uh, the, the, the money that it would take you to actually be able to, to scale it, then you move to customer validation, which is you start to look whether you have a sales roadmap. You have to look whether you understand the sales cycles, the ups and the downs. Uh, and then do you have a set of orders that are saying, yes, uh, the, the roadmap that I have is um, feasible because already I have a set of orders that is saying, I want to buy this customer, this, this product at this price. And do the financials make sense? So how, in the beginning, of course, your fixed costs are much higher, but if you're a lean startup, they shouldn't be that high. Eventually, are you going to be able, as a founder, first of all, to pay yourself a salary, eventually to hire the resources that you will need and the skills that you will need, um, and scale this model with the prices that you are charging? So then you move into the execution part, which is the customer creation. After you're proven that you can sell, you, you, you have this roadmap, it's, it's actually happening, then you grow your customers from few to many, but only then. Then you have your objectives for your first year, then you position, then you launch, and you think about creating a demand of many. There are three types of, of ways of thinking about this demand. Are you uh, already getting into a market that has that it exists but you're doing it better or you're doing it faster are you resegmenting are you going to a niche or are you going to a low-end version of something that is already out in the market or is it totally new uh, is it a new class of customer is it an innovation are you having to create demand for something that people were not uh, buying before and those two ways of creating demand, of course, have an impact in the business development and marketing that you're going to do in this customer creation phase. And finally, finally, which could take several years, you are going into company building, building your organization, your management, focusing on execution. Founders are usually casualties because they are very much visionaries when at this stage, you really need implementation. The COO is essential for this time. And founders uh, that listen to COOs are really important. Otherwise, uh, the founder is in, on the way for this scaling. And then you can think about sales, marketing, business, uh, business development de departments. Only then it becomes a more traditional company building. So what is the challenge of scaling up? It's the challenge is to understand these phases of scalability. The phase of customer discover and customer validation, where you are not growing as a company, you're testing, you're finding a business model, and then uh, the customer creation and company building, as we discussed. The premature failure risk, which happens not only in the private sector, it happens in governments, it happens in um, social enterprises, in NGO, um, is that you scale before you have found your scalable business model. So a startup is an organization which is searching for a scalable business model. A business model describes how a company makes the money. And the lean startup that we've been talking about optimizes the use of 
scarce resources. So what is the problem with premature scaling up? It reduces the agility of a company. It increases the cost of pivoting. If you have already invested a lot of money on something that actually the customer doesn't want, there's a lot of, of sunk costs that you will have to bear with. There's a reputational risk from those early customers that you went to when you were not quite ready and will say, oh, oh, either don't invest in that company or don't buy that product, it doesn't work. And most importantly, it shortens your runway. The runway is the number of months available for a startup before it runs out of cash. So the number of building, measuring, adapting cycles that you can actually finance. So um, as we spoke in, in our previous um, in our previous session, you can scale through the market, you can scale through the government. In this case, we've been talking about the lean startup that scales through the government, uh, through the market. And this uh, runway is very important because you will not have a lot of chances to get family and friends, uh, angel capital before you have proven and you can actually cross that valley of death.